Welcome back everyone, Michael here from Offshore Citizen. There has been a lot of talk and a bunch of people who are concerned about Thailand changing their tax rules. I did a kind of brief little video about it, how they are talking about basically making all foreign income uh, that's remitted regardless of when it was earned uh, taxable. But there is a little known tax exemption that is out there. And so today I'm going to talk about the zero tax exemption available for people in Thailand that many people may be excited about. So uh, let's dive in and talk about it. Before we do, if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the all notification bell. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm Michael. We here at the Offshore Citizen team are some of the foremost international tax experts in the world. So help people to figure out the personal as well as corporate tax, uh, whether they're going to stay in their home country or relocate abroad, as well as helping you to figure out what are the best places to relocate to. If you're you know, looking for one thing or another, as well as do international banking, asset protection, et cetera. So if you're interested in any of those things, as well as getting residencies and citizenships, et cetera, please reach out to us. You can book a call with me, calendly.com forward slash Michael dash Rosmer, link in the description below, or you can send a message through offshorecitizen.net. Okay. So uh, as I mentioned, Thailand recently announced some changes to their tax system. Thailand had previously been a sort of unknown favorable tax place. Uh, based on this system whereby a person could earn certain types of income, what was technically not earned income, uh, or usually not earned income, outside of Thailand, and then not remit it in the year that it was earned, and bring it, uh, bring it in afterwards, and make it tax-free, which was pretty excellent. And so I'd done some videos on that back in the day. Uh, unfortunately, they changed that, so supposedly the way that it is looking now, uh, all income that is remitted will end up being taxable. So, you know, there's still things you can do, having money in a company and stuff like that. But this being said, there's actually a little known exemption to this. And this is for a particular visa that we haven't talked too much about. In the past, uh, a few years ago, I mentioned how the Thai elite visa is like this amazing visa, it's wonderful. Now, a few things are true. The first thing is that the Thai elite visa happens to have gotten more expensive recently. So that's not so great, right? Better, uh, better value before. And on top of that, of course, you've got this non-favorable tax thing. However, there was another visa that was introduced called the LTR, the Long-Term Residency. And this is a 10-year visa for particular groups of people. I'm gonna go through for you the four groups that qualify in a second. But here's the really interesting thing. The really interesting thing is there's actually an explicit carve-out for people on the LTR from these new tax rules. And so it was a kind of a notice sent out to LTR holders uh, recently, and that's pretty cool. So in other words, you can go and you can live in Thailand under the LTR, and you can benefit from uh, potentially just a straight up tax exemption uh, across most types of income. So that's pretty interesting. So let's just quickly talk through, why have we not talked more about this LTR visa? It's partially because it's got these kind of weird requirements to it in particular on the working side. So a lot of people have some difficulties qualifying. Now, I've had some clients who have gone through and done it and uh, have found that it's not quite as uh, not quite as difficult to qualify for in practice as they make it sound on the paper. I will mention some details about that, although honestly, uh, it's somewhat nuanced to your situation and so that should be dealt with probably with them in general, but it's a fairly straightforward process and they tend to be pretty incentivized to try to work with you and help you through, and so that's really great. So just really quickly here, uh, as I was mentioning, there are four categories. These are wealthy global citizens, wealthy pensioners, work from Thailand professionals, and high-skilled professionals, okay? Uh, anyone who's under the LTR can bring four family members, uh, spouse and dependents, and they'll qualify for the same category as the LTR holder, which is pretty cool, okay? So uh, quickly, what is it that is necessary? So uh, to be a wealthy global citizen, as they call them, uh, you need to hold at least $1 million in assets, that's USD. Uh, you need to have annual income of at least $80,000 in the last two years. And you need to have a minimum investment of $500,000 in Thai government bonds, foreign direct investment, Thai property, or any combination thereof. So, you know, it's kind of like a little sort of golden visa under the Thailand way, uh, under the LTR. So that's, you know, for somebody who is willing to invest, not a bad, not a bad way to go. The next group are wealthy pensioners. Now, for the right people, this can work out fairly decent. 
This is retirees aged 50 years or older who have an annual pension or stable passive income, personal income, again, 80,000 US dollars, uh, applicants with a personal income ranging from between uh, 40,000 and 80,000 a year may also be eligible, uh, granted they have a minimum investment of 250,000 US dollars in Thai government bonds, foreign direct investment, or Thai property or any other combination. Uh, and income from employment will not be considered for people in that category. So for clients who call us who are, you know, a little, they're not as young, I guess, um, over 50, this can be a great option. This can work out pretty well. So these two categories, very straightforward, definitely worth considering for other people. By the way, uh, the cost to go through this is much cheaper than a Thai lead visa, and so that's also pretty cool. Now, where we get into a lot of people who I deal with, because you know, although we have clients who are in their 70s and clients who are you know, in their late teens, um, most of our clients, I would say, are in that sort of 25 to 45-ish range, so it doesn't fit under the retirement side. Uh, so this would be the remote workers uh, uh, for work from Thailand professionals. So, uh, number one, Annual income of at least 80,000 US dollars per year for the last two years. Okay, same as all these others. Uh, again, same sort of thing that if they're between 40 and 80,000, they may be considered if they have a master's degree uh, or own intellectual property or have received Series A funding. So, okay. Uh, number two, and, or number three, I guess, and this is probably the like one that really throws people off and causes issues. Current employer must be a public company listed on a stock exchange or a private company that has been in operation for a minimum of three years with a combined revenue of at least 150 million USD in the past three years. Now that excludes a lot of people, right? Um, if you're talking about a private business, I mean, has it done 150 million? I mean, it's not a low bar to pass for a lot of, say, startups, et cetera. So that's maybe a little bit of an issue. Uh, a lot of them are not public listed companies. Now, there are some ways to work around this one in particular. And this has to do with kind of how you end up categorizing these. Now, you tend to have to get some sort of kind of proof. And so uh, it, it's a little bit nuanced. This is like, this is one that if you were in this category, I would say definitely contact them and discuss with them whether you can make your situation work. Because I've seen some cases where the nuances uh, are not quite as hard to conform with as it might sound. Anyway, uh, additionally, the applicant must have at least five years of experience in the relevant field of their current employment over the past 10 years. So anyway, that's that. Then we come into the last one, which is high-skilled professionals uh, who are experts in targeted industries, working for business entities, institutions, government agencies in Thailand, annual of income, $80,000 in the past two years, uh, same sort of thing about the forty to 80000 if they have a master's degree above in science and technology or special expertise relevant to the job of assignment in Thailand. Uh, no minimum income requirements uh, for people who are working at government or higher institution, uh, higher educational institutions, research centers, etc. Uh, business must be in specific targeted industries, though, and they must have five years' experience in the targeted industries or have a PhD in the relevant fields or work. So, you know, fewer people are going to qualify for that. However, this being said, if you can qualify for one of the LTR visas, these are great visas to get. As I said, you get this tax exemption, that's awesome. A lot of people are interested in investing in Thailand anyway, so the ability to go and invest and get the visa is great. The income requirements are not insanely high. I mean, $80,000 for some people is maybe a little high, but you know, a lot of people can qualify for $80,000, so that's great. A uh, million dollars in assets, not an insanely high number. If you're over 50, quite easy to qualify. And again, you end up in this situation where you actually have this explicit carve out from the recent rules, uh, according to the, uh, uh, the department in charge of the LTR. So very cool. If you're interested in any of that or interested in figuring out other places or you're unhappy about what's going on with you with Thailand, you want to discuss it, please reach out to us. I will look forward to seeing you all on the next video.